Good morning. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Welcome to Good Shepherd. Those that are watching live and those that are here present, we are so happy to see you. Psalms 100 says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. We're here this morning to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. You are worthy, great Jehovah. Stand to your feet. Give him some praise in this house. Welcome him in this room this morning. Be free to worship. The altars are open if you want to come and express your love.
there are miracles in this room. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is too difficult. Come on.
what the Spirit is saying.
see victory. I see not just I'm going to see, but I see victory. Because we worship from a place of victory. You are triumphant. You are victorious. You are mighty through God. You are overcomers. You are more than a conqueror. You live a lifestyle of victory. Victory is yours because the battle is his. The name of Jesus be lifted high in this place. The word says you're a strong tower that we run to and we are safe. A tower that is bigger than us, bigger than our problems, higher than our situation. This morning I want you to run to him. Run to the strong tower, the name of the Lord. Jesus, we speak your name. The only name, the only thing we'll say over situations, problems, circumstances, our lost loved ones, over this city, Jesus. Can you just say his name? you to shut out those around you and I want you to worship. I know we're having a dinner afterwards, but I don't want you to even think about that. I want you to focus on Jesus. The, the one that we read about, the one we live for. Jesus be exalted in this place. Jesus be lifted high in this place. Jesus, you're the one we love. Jesus, you're the one we worship and adore. Jesus, it's you we live for. Jesus, it's you we serve. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. To live. Oh, oh. 
Say his name Jesus, in this place. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I just want to say your name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, the name above all names. I just want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Not my opinion, Jesus. Just your name. Come on, just say his name. If there's a family member that you're praying for, I want you to think about them and say, I speak there's a situation that you're facing, I just want you to say, I speak Jesus. Over your body right now, I just speak your name. Jesus, over this infirmity, over this sickness, over this pain. Not opinions. Everybody seems to have something to say, but the only thing I want to say is Jesus. I just want to say, Hallelujah, he is here. Amen. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that for a moment. I was reading this weekend. Let me pull up the scripture. Isaiah 61. That he would console those 
who mourn in Zion. He would give us beauty for ashes. We're talking about Jesus. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. Today I want to ask you, how was your union with Jesus? I want you to think about that. Because the Bible says in John 15 that he's the vine and we're the branches. Life flows through him. So I want you to think about it just for a minute. And I just want you to interlock your fingers or maybe just your clasp your hands there for a moment. And I want you to think about that's your union with Christ. Palm against palm. How is your union with Christ? Is there anything there that gets in the way? Are you putting anything in your hands that's getting in the way? Are you looking at things that are getting in the way? Are you thinking of things that are getting in that way? But how is your union with Jesus this morning? Because the Bible says that he will give us beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. I want you to think about that. Where is your relationship with Jesus? I want you to think about that just for a minute. And we can begin to ask, Lord, heal our the union. Some of you need to say that. Let's just say that. Lord, heal our union, Lord. Maybe there's been unforgiveness. Maybe there's been hurt feelings, Lord. Maybe there's been sin, unrepented sin, Lord. Maybe there's been... Uh, suicidal thoughts, Lord. Right now, Lord, we take authority against every suicidal thought in the name of Jesus Christ, and we bring it down. We take it captive right now. Right now, I ask you, Lord, to heal our union. Let us become one. Just pray that. Say, Lord, heal our union, Lord. Maybe we're not as close as we used to be, or maybe we're not as close as we talk like we are. But, Lord, we're asking this morning that you would heal our union with you. And I want you just to declare, say, Jesus, I love you. Let's start there. Jesus, I love you. Come on, we're starting there. Jesus, I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're giving us beauty for ashes, Lord. The oil of joy for mourning, Lord. The garment of praise where there's been heaviness, Lord. We thank you that we can be one with you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, just receive his presence this morning. He is here. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit is in this place today. That we don't have to leave the way that we came. We can be renewed and restored today in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, guys. Isn't God good? God is so good. It's so. I'm so glad to see you this morning. Here in just a moment, we're going to receive our tithe and our offering. Thank you so much for your generosity. It's great to see our friends, Trent and Janice Hounsville. They were our youth leaders and youth pastors when we were 15. I think they were 16, and uh, so just a couple years older, but they're friends of ours for many years from our own home church back home, and uh, we're glad that they are here with us, join us as a guest today. But we are glad that you're here today watching online. I know people are watching uh, online. I know people that are quarantining still or sick, and we're praying for you. It's good to see Tim uh, in the house of God. We're praying for Tim's healing. Tim's our drummer, and uh, he needs a healing in his body, he needs surgery. Thank you for Levi for uh, filling in for him. But God is so good. We're glad that you're here this morning. And before we receive our tithe and our offering this morning, just want to make mention, do you want to say anything? Uh, Chris is, is, was our youth leader, and now she's transitioning over to our kids' church department. She did a great job with them, and she's redoing that. And we're relaunching our kids' program, and we're excited about that. She's decorating the room, and it looks great, and we're going to share about that. But you've, you've got a name, and anything you want to share on that? Yeah. Well, the name is God's Flock. You know, I prayed about this for a long time since I knew, and I just feel like 
his children are his flock and he's here for them. And my mission is to reach the community one child at a time. Amen. And it starts there. It starts with the children. The community needs us. Oh, it's outside the four walls. I mean, we're here right now, but the children out in the community need something. You know, as a teacher, I don't, a lot of them don't have family. They don't have mom and dads that we may be blessed with. And we have to remember that as the church, that they're looking at us for that mom, dad, sister, brother. They're looking at us for that. And I just want our church family to back me up right. as the children's pastor and pray for your community and pray for your children and pray for me. And let's see them walk through these doors and let's open them and welcome them with open arms because they're coming in Jesus' name. Stand there, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for Carissa. The hand of God is on her life. Meet every need. I pray that you send laborers into the harvest to help her. Bless her today in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. So if you want to be released for Kiss Church, you can do that. God is so good. Before we receive our offering, I just want to encourage you, vote this Tuesday. We're praying uh, for God's will. We're going to be informed. And I shared last week that we are pro-life. And I want to encourage you to be informed how you vote. Go in and vote. And we're praying for the future for our kids, our grandkids, and those that are following us. But I want to encourage you to get out, vote, and leave the rest in God's hand. Amen. So we're going to begin to declare our offering. Ready? If you want to get your offering out, you can text the word GIVE to 502-822-2001 any time throughout the week. Or you can make a check out to Good Shepherd here today. We're going to stand and we're going to do our declaration together this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Go ahead. Lord Jesus, I come into your house not empty-handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain, and the hours are rebuked for my sake. This year is continuation of the Jubilee Month. By faith, I have a better job, promotions, raises, bonuses, and benefits. Business opportunities, sales, and commission increases. Inheritance and rebates notices and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalty, and scholarships. Gifts, surprises, and newfound money. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have anointed for blessings. Bless this offering in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. You crush the darkness. You made a pool of death and grave. Oh, King Jesus. You make royals out of slaves. And now there's freedom. And now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power. sleep last night. So can you, has the Lord been good to you this week? Can you give him a shout of praise? Amen. Amen. 
Well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. We are just excited to be here, and I want to remind you guys, we are having a chicken dinner after church, so I just want to um, invite you all to stay for that. It's so good. You're going to eat lunch somewhere unless you're fasting. And so you might as well stay and eat lunch with us. It's the gospel bird. It's fried chicken. And so you all will love it, and it'll be a great time of fellowship. So you definitely want to make sure that you stay for the dinner. Well, us ladies, we had a wonderful weekend this weekend. We had our Abundantly Blessed Women's Service Friday night. Ladies, did you love that? It was so good. And I just feel a continuation of the Lord just moving in this service. And we enjoyed ourselves so much the other night so thank you ladies for coming out and my new friend she's been coming to a couple of our services she's here today so I'm so excited that she's here and so God is so good but I will tell you what just made me so excited and brought me such joy you know we're doing a series on joy but uh, what brings me joy and maybe some of you as well was that extra hour of sleep now, Pastor always says that every year, every year he says this, he's, he'll, it'll be like 8.30 at night, and he'll say, but it's really 7.30. And I'll say, no, the clock does not change until midnight, and or 2 o'clock is it? And I'll tell you one thing, I am not going to give up that extra hour of sleep. And I said, so, you know what? I said to me, it is this time, and I'm going to go to sleep, and I am going to get that extra hour of sleep. And I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night, and I slept so good. But I woke up feeling so good that I woke up at 530. So I don't know if I really got that extra hour of sleep or not. But anyway, I did have some good quiet time with the Lord and enjoyed my coffee. <laughs> Cook for the dinner. But you know what? That brought us joy, and there's so many things in life that bring us joy. But one thing I want to talk about, something that brings us joy, and that has brought me joy. And it's something that I was someone I was introduced to when I was 15 years old, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings us joy. And if we are going to do all that God has called and created us to do, if we're going to live that life that he wants us to live, that abundant life, we need the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so today we are going to be talking about joy, but we are going to be talking about how the Holy Spirit brings us joy. So if you have your Bibles, your phone, your iPad, we'll have it up here on the screen. Go ahead and turn with me to Acts chapter 3, 1 through 10 is what we're going to be reading. I want to go ahead and pray. Father, we just love you and thank you for today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have already been in this place and you have been preparing our hearts as we came to worship you. You've prepared our hearts to receive this word that you have for us. So I pray, Lord, that you would help us to lay aside everything aside and that we would focus only on you and what you want to say to us. I thank you that you are in this place. So now, Lord, I pray that you would open up our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hear and receive everything that you have for us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor today, and I want you to say, God has a word for you. And now I want you to point to yourself and say, God has a word for me today. I came expecting today, I came expecting to see the Lord move in a mighty way. I came expecting to, for the Lord to speak to us, amen. And so today we're going to start in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. It says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him. Can everyone say fixing his eyes on him? With John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, and expecting 
to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately, can you say immediately? Immediately, not later on, not a year later, but immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. People are going to receive strength in this place today. So he went leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Listen, this this gets me really excited, this story right here. Here we have a man, and if you read on in later chapters, it goes on to say, and commentaries say that this man was around 40 years old. And so here was a man that was carried to this temple outside to beg for money every single day. And he was born with this condition, with this condition. I am here to tell you today that there are some of you here that have some conditions that the Lord wants to heal you from today. And so here was this man. He was 40 years old born with condition that he could not walk. And so he had to depend on other people to carry him, take him to the temple, and he had to depend on other people to be his resource. He was brought there all of his life. Here he was, 40 years living with a condition. But then one day, one day, two men who were on fire for God, filled with the Holy Ghost, came walking to go to church. Listen, they came to go to church to go worship in the temple, and that day that man's life was changed. And today we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit brings us joy. When this man was touched, he got up, he went walking, and leaping and praising God he was filled with joy and if you read on in another chapter it says that Peter took that opportunity to present the gospel and around 5,000 people came to know Jesus because they saw a man who had been lame all of his life and one moment in 10 seconds a man's life had been changed. And I want to propose to you today that Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, then you can go and do the the same thing that Peter and John did because it says in Acts I want us to take a look in Acts it says in Acts um Yes, Acts 1, 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So this miracle that took place at the temple, this man that had been crippled, this was the first miracle that took place after they had been in the upper room and received the Holy Spirit. This was the first miracle that the apostles had performed, that they saw, oh my gosh, this man has been healed. Now, in Acts 1, Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit, and here they are coming to church. And you know, as I was praying, the Lord was just speaking to me different things. And you know, church is not the same as it was two years ago, right? We all understand that, and we need to come to grips that it's not the same. It's not going to be the same. 
same because how many knows God's going to just do something greater and even better? And so we need to be okay with that. And we need to accept that church is not the way that it was two years ago. And as times change, methods change. The Word of God will never change. God will never change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. However, when times change, methods sometimes have to change. And it is time for us as a church to get out of the four walls and to go about our our business wherever we're going, whether it's Walmart, Kroger, to work, what dropping the kids off to school. And it is our job to be commissioned into the world to see people saved, set free, delivered, and healed. Now, Peter and John did not go and try to persuade this man to come to church. They did not go to him and say, well, can we carry you into church and let us just get you to church and then you'll be healed. No, that's not what they did. They didn't try to hop that man, that crippled man that had a condition that needed a touch from God. They didn't hop him up to try to go to church. And as believers, we need to quit trying to hype people up and get them here to get get them fixed. We need to go out there, give them that what's been imparted in us, let them be changed, and then bring them right in, and then let them be here and be discipled and be changed. Listen, we need to invite people to the Lord, but don't let that be your excuse that you don't have to go and do the signs and wonders. So many times we want to use that as a good excuse. Well, I'll just invite you to church and then, and then you'll get to see what you need. No, we have it. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And the Bible tells us that Jesus said that greater works that I did, you're going to do. And so we're going to do those. God's anointed us to do those things. And it is time for us to rise up and take our position. The enemy has tried to shut people's voices for way too long and today I take authority over the enemy and where the enemy has tried to put a muzzle on your mouth where you could not speak the word of God I declare right now that your mouth will open and you will prophesy the word of the Lord and the enemy will not shut your mouth again I take authority over the enemy of that He has tried to shut you up. He has tried to obscure your vision that you could not see what he wants to do. Listen, it is the Lord bringing the super to the natural. You cannot understand the supernatural in your natural eyes. And oh, that the Lord would open your eyes that you would see in the supernatural. That it doesn't matter what the enemy wants you to think that it looks like. It is what God has promised is going to happen. And that's what you have to stand upon but we are in a time that we do not need to hype up people to get them to church you know there was this evangelist I wanted to go hear speak not too long ago and they were just right down the road from me I thought well I'm gonna go listen to them and this pastor he was he was online and he was like oh my gosh we're having revival it's standing room only you gotta get here you gotta get there and I got there and it was like 11 people I was like okay I said all right praise the Lord People like to hop things up. But when you carry the goods, <laughs> you don't have to hop anything up. When you're carrying the power of the Holy Spirit in you, you don't have to hype things up. You don't have to make people think that you have it so full in a building and it's not the truth. You don't have to hype things up. But it is time for us to take our position. Now, we need to see that Peter and John was commissioned. They were commissioned by the Holy Spirit. We read in Acts 1.8, and every single one of us has been commissioned to go into the world and to preach the gospel. You may say, well, Pastor Beth, I am not a preacher, but the Lord has given you a mouth and he has given you the word of God and he has given a testimony in your life of what he's done for you. Now, let me tell you what happened years ago when I was 15 years old. I was thinking about this while I was preparing my message this week and you messaged us and said you all were coming to visit Listen, I was 15 years old, and many of you know that, you know, I just did not feel like I was good at anything. I was not good at sports, all that, right? 
I just had no uh, self-esteem. I just didn't think I was good at anything. And then here's Trent and Janice having to teach me and Josh, bless their heart. They are going to get a lot of rewards in heaven. And I remember I was 15. A man, I love to just talk, which that has not changed. And I love to talk. And I just talk, 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 talk. And I know that I tried his patience. But I'm going to tell you, they were the ones that gave me my first thing to ever serve at church with. And he called me aside after Sunday school, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I am really in trouble now. This is like he's had it. He's done with me talking. And he came to me, and he said, Beth, he said, you know what? He said, I have a list of Sunday school members, and there's sometimes they're not here. I would love for you to take this list, and I would like for you to call them and tell them that we miss them and just check on them. I thought, well, I could do that. And you know what? He saw that there was a gift there of me talking. But he was able to take that and see that God wanted to do that. And I'm so thankful that you did that because it helped me to step out and to be obedient. And so what I want to let you know is that the Lord has commissioned every single one of you. You may feel inadequate. there, And I know that there are some in this room that feel inadequate because the Lord said that. And you may feel inadequate that you may not have what it takes to do what the Lord's asking of you to do. But you have to understand that it is not in your strength. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And so it's the spirit of God that's working inside of you. But the Lord has commissioned you. He has commissioned you to go. Janice, when we were in worship, I was just praying and I just I heard the Lord say that there is such a gift of intercession on your life and that you have spent so many hours in your prayer closet interceding and praying in the Holy Ghost and I just heard the Lord say that sometimes you don't even know where your prayers are going or what they're targeting but the Lord said that there have been times that he's drawn you into the prayer closet to pray and your prayers have went to third world countries that walls have came fallen down because you have took time to intercede and that the Lord is going to increase that gift on your life and that he's going to call you in that prayer closet even more and he wants to encourage you and let you know that all the times that he does it that there are lives being changed because of your obedience and that's exactly what God wants to do he has commissioned us all Sarah I was praying this week and I was thinking of you and how the Lord has just received favor that you've received favor from the Lord where you're at at Chick-fil-a you thought when you were 16 years old that this was going to be a great job how fun was it that your first job was what your mom's first job was and you just thought okay this is a great I'm going to be off on Sundays however you didn't understand that the Lord had positioned you there for such a time as this that this is a very strategic place where the Lord's put you and I just see Peter and John when they're walking down the street and they go to offer that man what they did have and that's what you are when you walk into that place at Chick-fil-a people are going to feel the presence of God they already do but it's going to be even more and I just want to encourage you to let you know that it's for such a time as this that the Lord has placed you there and that you're going to see many people come to know the Lord and you're they're going to receive from you because you carry that anointing on your life but you have been strategically placed commissioned to that place that is your mission field there and so I'm just so thankful for that and the Lord is wanting commissioning every single one of you to go into this world and to preach the gospel it is not the church's responsibility to make other people's conditions bearable It is not the church's responsibility to make the world's conditions bearable. But it is the church's responsibility for them to see the mighty hand of God working on them and bringing a healing to them, delivering them, and setting them free from the conditions. People are in conditions for far too long. And here are Peter and John coming to worship at the temple. Listen, we shouldn't have to tell you to come to church we shouldn't have to remind you to come to church every Sunday I shouldn't have to send a text message and say hey we've got church or hey we're uh, changing the clocks don't be late for church I shouldn't have to tell you to come to church you should want to come to church 
Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit. They could have said, okay, I received everything I needed. I don't have to go to church. But let me tell you what, when I, I, called, when I called upon the name of the Lord, I said, I'm going to serve him all the days of my life. And you're going to find me in the house of God all the days of my life. I shouldn't have to convince you to get up every Sunday to come to church or try to give you an incentive to be here. It should be enough that Jesus saved you. Shoo, I'm telling you, that extra hour of sleep did me good. Now, I'm telling you, I'm excited about this message. And so they were commissioned. You've been called and commissioned. And you came up with all kinds of excuses not to take your position. And today, the Lord is drawing a line in the sand. And he is saying, are you going to step out or will you continue with the excuses? And you know what? If you tell the Lord no right now, then he'll just step aside and he'll just move on to the next person that's going to do it. Now, I will tell you that the Lord, he is, he's patient. The giftings he gives you, he will not take them back. But if he continues and continues and continues and you keep rejecting him, he will go to the person that will say yes. And the Lord wants to ask you today, right now, where's your yes? Where's your yes? Will you say yes when the Lord's commissioned you? Will you say yes if you're out in Kroger and the Lord's saying pray for that person? Will you say yes? Will you do what the Lord's called and commissioned you to do? And you know what? I could just imagine Peter not feeling adequate enough to do it. He had just denied Jesus three times, folks. Three times before that happened, and he was just placed as the leader of the church. And here they are, coming down the street to go to church. They see that man begging for money. Couldn't imagine what was going on in Peter's mind. But you know what I know? Is there had to be faith. He had to act in faith. There's going to be times that the Lord's going to ask specific things of you to do. And it's going to require faith. It may not make sense. It may not, you may not understand why you have to do it. But it's going to take faith and you have to do it. And the moment you say yes and you do it in faith, then God's going to do another thing. He's going to ask you to do another and another and another. And you think about Peter. Here he goes and he says, okay, so I, I can't give you any money because I don't have any money. But what I do have in the name of Jesus, he carried the name of Jesus. And he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And then he took the man's hand. And pulled him up. What kind of faith would that be? How easy is it to go and pray for someone for healing, but then not act on it and act, ask them to get up to see if they're really healed? And so when we're going to be um, going out and doing what the Lord's asked us to do with the Holy Spirit, we have to act in faith. But then there was an expectancy. I love how it brought it out in the word that it said that Peter and John, Peter said, look at me. Now, have you ever went to Walmart, and they have those Spectrum people there? And you know, I've talked about this before, and you want to avoid them, and you definitely don't want to make eye contact with them, right? Because as soon as you make eye contact with them, they're going to say, where's your internet service? Who's your carrier? All that stuff. Well, then one time, I was like, they asked me that question. I was like, if you want to ask me a question, then I'm going to ask you a question. Where do you go to church? Do you want to come to church? But you know what? We go through Walmart, and we go, and we, we just dodge them, and we don't want to make that eye contact. But I love how the Lord wanted to bring this out, that Peter said, look at me. And so what did this happen? This brought expectation. So here this man with this condition, he had been there, and he was like, oh, my gosh, they're telling me to look at them. They must are going to be giving me money. There was an expectation. The man was expecting to get money and the Lord wants to know where is your expectation are you expecting great things from the Lord the man came expecting money but got a far greater thing the man's whole life had changed within 10 seconds and he came expecting he expected money but he got something
something better. And some of you here today have been selling yourself short. You have been expecting a lot less than what God wants you to expect. And some of you have made it a motto of your life that you go around and say, I don't want to get my hopes up because what if I get disappointed? Well, listen, the Lord did not send his son Jesus to die on the cross for us so that we could live a mediocre life, that we would live a life that we don't want to get our hopes up. No, it says that he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could even ask, think, or imagine. And today, some of you need to grab a hold of that and quit saying, I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm afraid I'll be disappointed. But you need to be walking around saying, God's going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could even ask think or imagine in my life in my family in my workplace God is going to do it and this man expected money but his whole life was changed isn't that exciting to think about you are going to come across people who have conditions that have had them for a very long time and they are expecting a quick fix but you carry the Lord the Holy Spirit inside of you and you carry that anointing and you're going to be able to go and you're going to be able to give them what's going to change them forever there was an expectation what are you expecting are you expecting doom and gloom are you expecting the worst to happen are you saying well nothing ever good happens comes to me what are you expecting? This man expected money, but he got a healing. So many times we expect something and we're disappointed because we didn't get it, but God had something way better in mind. We are not God. We do not, we do not think the way that he thinks. He does things a whole lot better than we could ever do. He, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And I want to encourage you right now that whatever you've been disappointed, with because it hasn't turned out the way that you thought it was going to turn out the Lord wants you to know it's because he has something greater for you don't let the enemy come and lie to you and tell you that you're going to live a life of disappointment and that God didn't hear your prayer somebody is here today and you think that the Lord has not heard your prayer because it did not come about the way that you thought it was well the Lord's been protecting you and he has something far greater for you so what's that What's that expectation? He's wanting to fill you to overflowing. Some of you were filled with the Holy Spirit years ago, and you have not prayed in your prayer language in years. And the Lord wants to refill you to overflowing. Whatever is in you is going to come out. If I take a lemon and I squeeze that lemon, I'm going to get lemon juice. But if you're walking around feeding yourself the things of the world, when you're squeezed, the world is going to come out. But if you're being filled up with the Holy Spirit and filled up with the Word of God, then that's what's going to overflow onto the people you come across. And listen, it's not that Peter and John had the right words. It's not that they had to preach a big sermon they knew that they carried the power of God that they said it's in the name of Jesus some of you are so caught up that you're not going to know what to say but all you have to do is open your mouth to your co-worker and say in the name of Jesus come out of that depression in the name of Jesus come out of that oppression in the name of Jesus be healed and set free and delivered and saved and then you grab a hold of them and you bring them to church and let me tell you they're not going to fight you about coming to church this man as soon as he was healed he attached himself to Peter and John and went walking and leaping and praising God and it said that the whole people around them knew who this man was and Peter took it upon himself to preach the word because of it. He took a hold of that moment, and he did it, and 5,000 people came to know the Lord. Some people say, well, how are we going to reach people? What are we going to do? Do we need more programs? No, we need people to be obedient. Oh, well, let's do this program, and let's do that program, and let's do this, and let's do that. Why don't we just go out and do whatever the Holy Spirit says to do? Whew. 
we need to do what the Lord says to do. There was obedience. I'll never forget that story that Eli shared on Mother's. Wasn't it Mother's Day that you encountered that little man that was standing outside? It was on Mother's Day. And Eli had just finished going and playing uh, basketball or at the gym. And he was on his way home. And there was a man that was asking for money. Just like, look at this. That was asking for money. And Eli said, well, I don't have anything to give him. And the Lord said, well, why don't you give him this piece of gum that you have and tell him that God loves him? Well, Eli, he wrestled around with that like, what? Give him a piece of gum and tell him that God loves him like he wants money. And so Eli said, you know what? But God said to do it, so I'm going to do it. And so Eli got out of the car, and he said, here. He said, I don't have any Just like this story, Eli. He's like, I don't have any money to give you, but I do have a piece of gum. And I want to tell you that God loves you. And the man started crying and said that it was Mother's Day and that that was the last thing his mother had said, that he loved, that God loved him. And then God gave him, a, was it that, God, that she got a piece of gum from her son or that God loved her? Yes, she gave him a piece of gum and said, God loves you. That didn't make sense to Eli. Eli was like, what in the world is this about? This makes no sense to me. But he was obedient. It didn't make sense to Peter and John to say, I don't have money, but what I do have, I'll go ahead and give it to you. It's obedience. It's acting on that obedience. And now Eli has a job at UPS. And the first day at UPS, he was there walking through wherever the department he was at. And he heard someone call his name. And it was the man that had been outside that he gave the gum to. I mean, he just turned it right back around and brought him right back in that path. You never know, but you have to be obedient. It may not make sense what the Lord is asking you to do, but how are you going to know if you don't do it? So today, God is wanting to fill you with his spirit. He's wanting to stir up that expectation in you. He wants to bring the joy of the Lord. Listen, some of you feel like, you know, you're inadequate. You don't have what you need. You don't have what it takes. Listen, the Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And some of you feel like you don't have what it takes. It's because you've not been spending time in his presence. You've got to get in his presence. And that does not mean just during your commute back and forth to work. You cannot concentrate on what in the world the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to you at that moment when you're looking around making sure nobody's going to hit you. But it's carving that time out and spending time with the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy fullness of joy that's going to overflow. So today, the Lord is commissioning you. Today is your day of commissioning. Today, the Lord is wanting to fill you to overflowing. Today, the Lord is asking you to be obedient. Today, the Lord is wanting you to be faithful. Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to step out in faith? Are you going to do what the Lord wants you to do, even when it doesn't make sense? Are you going to be bold? Listen, the reason Peter and John could do it was because they were filled with the Holy Spirit, which gave them the boldness that they needed. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it gives you the boldness that you need. And so today, I believe right now in the name of Jesus that the Lord is stirring up a joy inside of you. There are some of you that have been oppressed and you have been depressed and you felt like your condition was never going to change, but I prophesy to you now, your condition is over. It is gone in Jesus' name and the oil of gladness is coming upon you and the Lord is touching you and he is healing you. Whatever it is that you have need of, God is wanting to do that. Would you all come forward? God is wanting to do this in you. This is what the Lord wants to do. This is the day that the Lord has made, and this is what he wants to do. God wants to set you free. He wants to heal you. He wants to heal your bodies. He wants to heal your mind, and he wants to give you boldness for your purpose. That is what God wants to do. I love reading about revivals. I love reading about uh, the Welsh revival and all the things that the Lord did in the past. 
But I'm here to tell you that there is another great move of God that is going to be spreading all across this world. And it's already started. And it's going to happen before the Lord comes back. And it's going to happen. But one thing I loved reading was about the Welsh revival. I loved reading about the stories and the things that the Lord did during those revivals. And, and I love to hear how it all came about and what led up to that revival. And you all know that, you know, Pastor and I have said that a revival is coming. But you know what? Here's the thing, that a revival has to start with you, yourself. You have to be revived. That's what revival is, is being revived. But there was three things that the people learned at the Welsh revival and what they needed to do. They learned that they needed to be conscious of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit was doing. They needed to depend on the Holy Spirit, not on their thoughts, not on what they thought was going on, and they had to surrender. So I want to ask you today, will you be conscious of what the Lord's wanting to do? Will you be conscious of the Holy Spirit moving? Will you be so dependent upon the Holy Spirit that whatever He asks you to do, whether it makes sense or not, will you do it? And will you completely surrender? wholeheartedly to God. Will you do those three things that you can have the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit? Amen. Let's all stand to our feet all over this place. I want to pray for us. Listen, and you know, I, I am just a firm believer that if, if the Lord's speaking to my heart and I need him to do something, I just want to step out and I just want God to do it. So if you're here today, if you're saying, you know what, I need an infilling. I need an infilling of the Holy Spirit. If you're here and you say, you know what, that there's been some dry areas in my life and I need the Holy Spirit to come and fill me up. If you need a healing in your body, if you need a touch from the Lord, if you need that boldness that the Holy Spirit carries, if you're here today and you say, you know, I just surrender. I surrender to God and I want to be conscious of what the Lord is doing and how the Holy Spirit is moving. And I just want you to step out of your seats. I'm not going to ask you to say or do anything. I want you to come forward as an act before God that's saying, all right, I'm going to step out and I'm surrendering right now. Lord, I, I know that I can't depend on myself, that I need a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost, that I need a healing in my body, that Lord, I want to be dependent upon you, that I want to be obedient when you tell me to do something. No, I want to go and do it and be an act in faith. And right now, Lord, as I step forward, I'm just saying, here I am, God. Here I am. Come do what you want to do. Father, I thank you that you're in this place. And Lord, as we step out and we surrender our life to you, we're saying, come have your way, Lord. Have your way. Do what you want to do. And Lord, I speak over everyone in this place where you felt like there's been disappointment and you felt like it's not going to turn around. I just want to speak the truth of God because let me tell tell you what, the enemy, he is the father of all lies, but God is true. So I speak the truth over your life, and I say that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can even ask, think, or imagine, and I speak hope to your situation. There is never a situation that is too big for God, and the enemy wants you to feel hopeless, but I speak hope into that situation right now. Where you've been, that the enemy's tried to close your mouth, I speak that your mouth is open right now and you're preaching the word of God thank you father for what you're doing in this place hallelujah we surrender to you right now whatever it is that you came up here needing from God I want you to just ask God right now if it's that you need to be filled Lord I need a fresh I need a fresh touch from you just say it now Lord I need a fresh touch from you if you need a healing Lord you know I need a healing in my body if you need God to fill you with hope, Lord, I need that hope from you. Father, I need you to work in my life. Lord, I pray over every single person right now. Move and meet every need, every need right now in the name of Jesus. 
If you did not need a prayer and you didn't come forward, then I want you to come behind the people that are up here. I want you to come intercede with them. I want us to spend time right now singing this song. But as we sing this song, I want you right now, those of you that are here, as an act of surrendering to God, I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. Pastor, let's pray for you. Jesus, I will rejoice. 
I just want us to take a moment while wherever we are, wherever we're standing, we always want to make sure that we give everyone an opportunity to know Jesus as their Savior. Amen. And right now, if there's anyone here, if you've never received Jesus as your Savior or you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, just lift your hand up right now. I believe that everyone's right exactly where they need to be with the Lord, but I just want to give you that opportunity. Maybe you're here watching today online or you're going to watch later this week. We want to make sure that you know how to give your life to the Lord. It's as simple as A, B, and C. We admit that we were sinners in need of a Savior. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and we confess our sins to Him and ask Him to forgive us. And so right now, I just want to pray for everyone here, everyone watching. Father, I thank you, Lord, that if there's anyone watching that needs to receive you, Lord, I thank you that they're going to give their life to you, surrender it wholeheartedly. I thank you for what you're doing in this place. I thank you that you're stirring up every spiritual gift inside of us. We're going to go forth, and we're going to share what you've done for us, and we're going to see so many people serve you, Lord. We thank you. You're so obedient, and you're so faithful, and we just love you, Lord. We just give you glory. Can you all just give the Lord glory today? Can you just thank the Lord for what he's doing in you, the victory that he's bringing to you. So Father, we thank you for it right now. And Lord, I bless everyone in this place as we go forth through the week. I pray that you watch over and bless them. Lord, keep them safe. I pray over this food. Let it be nourishment to our bodies. Bless the fellowship. Bless everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love every one of you. Don't forget, we have prayer at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays. And we also have a Bible study, fantastic Bible study we're doing at 6.30 on Wednesdays. Come be a part of it. We love you. God bless you. And make sure you stay for dinner.